Hi, Greg. Welcome. We are broadcasting right now so that the uh, viewers can see my screenshot that the Lunch and Learn will begin soon. Um, I'm going to turn my mic back off again, and I will give you guys a one-minute warning when okay. we're about ready to start. Uh, get, if you want to mute your mics, that's fine. And what people are seeing on the screen is the Lunch and Learn will begin shortly, so they are not viewing you. So I'm going to mute again. Before you mute, I'm looking for my lower third. Okay, over to the left, the mailbox, or yeah. the toolbox. Uh -huh. And then when you click on the toolbox, it should open Hangout Toolbox to your right. It's the little man with the circle. Okay. Got it. Okie doke. And if you did leave it on, you'll have to turn it off and back on. Oh, it's showing. You're good. Hey, Laurie, we're getting a little moray effect from your blinds.
Okay, we're at five minutes, guys. One minute. do the small chit chat before you go live. I wonder if like live television, is it really quiet before, you know, they say, and you're three, two, one. No, it's dead silent. Yeah. Okay, guys, it's ready. I'm going to remove the lunchbox. Remove the lunchbox. Removing lunchbox. <laughs> Looking at Brian. All right. Well, hello and welcome to another Lunch and Learn Hangout session sponsored by AT Still University Information Technology and Services Group. We are now on Season 2, Episode 12. And our topic for today is uh, social media and social networking. Uh, we've got uh, a, a good group. Uh, so today we have with us uh, Greg Rubenstein and Lori Trowbridge from the Communications and Marketing Department. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Hello. 
Before we get started, I would like to remind uh, our viewers that the next Break to Educate session will demonstrate a Google delegation. So that's the topic that we have here. Is that correct, Gene? Is it delegation, or are we going to do Hangouts? No, we changed it. We had some interest on Hangouts, so we're the next one will be Hangouts. All right, great. So we're going to do Hangouts, uh, the next one. It is a week from Friday. Um, so if you haven't caught the uh, the trailers that have been put together for these kinds of sessions, take a look at them. Kind of watch your uh, stream, if you will, as well as your email. We'll try and send out notices both ways um, for the next week to educate and lunch and learns. So in addition to that, um, if you have ideas, if anyone has ideas for uh, or suggestions for topics that we uh, that they would like us to cover in either the lunch and learns or the break to educates, please pass those along. Um, and you can either do that in the comments or just send Gene or myself an email or um, on any of the uh, event streams and we kind of keep track on it. So with that, I think uh, let's go ahead and get started. And uh, Greg, we're going to turn it over to you to kind of kick us off. Thank you, Brian. Uh, as you mentioned, Brian mentioned, I'm Greg Rubenstein. I'm the Interim Co-Vice President of Communication and Marketing. And with me is Lori Trowbridge, ATSU's Interactive Specialists. One of Lori's roles is managing ATSU social media. So what is it that we do with social media? And it's interesting, uh, about a year, maybe a little bit more ago, Gene originally hit me up to do this Lunch and Learn, and uh, I, I declined because I didn't think we were ready. At that point, um, what, what ATSU doing was, was doing with social media was still pretty hit and miss. We, we had a few dedicated people who were publishing activities. Um, we still didn't have any kind of integrated plan with what we were going to do with social media, what our purpose was. Fast forward a year, we have incrementally improved. We do have some of a plan, but we're still a little bit scattered. And um, I welcome the opportunity today to, to explain a little, about, a little bit about what the university is doing, how we're doing it, and really where we're going in the future. Um, we use social media to help spread the word about ATSU. We use it to publicize what's going on on campus. We use it as a means of engaging people, starting conversations. Uh, social media is typically where people first hear about ATSU. So everything that we do, you may find on there. We use Facebook, we use LinkedIn, we use Twitter, we use YouTube, Google+, we even use our own iConnect, which we call our own social media channel. Uh, most important thing about social media, it needs active participation. Um, it needs active participation from everybody. That means from students, from faculty, staff, and leadership. To talk a little bit about more about that, I'm going to throw it back to Lori. Thanks, Greg, uh, and thank you everybody who's attending today. Um, just to provide a little background about who I am, I've only been with the university for about seven months, um, but I did want to introduce myself and let you know where my strengths are. I've spent the last 10 years in higher education, specifically in marketing and communications in both private and public institutions. Um, my main areas of responsibility have been online writing, uh, front-end web development, web usability and accessibility. In the last three years, uh, social media has been folded into my area of responsibility and it's been a very unique and fun evolution. And this morning what I'd like to start off with is defining what social media is, which platforms ATSU is using, and why we should care. It may be obvious since it's been around for over 10 years, hard to believe. Anyone remember MySpace? Social media is essentially internet-based tools that make it easier for individuals to listen, interact, engage, and collaborate with one another. Many of us use social media every day. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, and we use it to stay in touch with our family and friends, whether we're posting photos or we're posting videos or just posting content or reacting to a piece of content that somebody has posted. We're there to stay in touch with people. We're there to connect with family and friends. We're using services like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Vine, Foursquare, Feed. The list goes on. And social media moves beyond staying in touch with just friends. With LinkedIn, you can connect with individuals professionally. You can job search. You can join various networking groups and connect with other professionals just like you. 
As Greg mentioned earlier, ATSU actively uses YouTube, uh, Google+, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. So why? Why should the university care about social media? Well, consider this. In 2006, there were about 1,000 users on Twitter. By 2012, there were over 500 million users. It's an impressive number. It clearly shows that our audiences are on social media. They love being on social media. And we can no longer take the mentality of, if we build it, they will come. We need to go where our audiences are located. With over a billion people online, ATSU has an opportunity to increase its, its, vis its visibility to strengthen our mission. Social media is one of the most effective tools we can use to spread the ATSU word to students, faculty, staff, and alumni. And that can only help us attract new students and even potential donors. We can also talk directly with our followers, answer their questions, and show them a slice of what it's like to be part of our campus community. Communications and marketing is about creating and building relationships, and social media is often where those relationships begin. I'm going to hand it back off to Greg now to talk about a few ways that ATSU is using social media in our marketing efforts. Thanks, Laurie. So what exactly do we do with social media? Uh, from a business perspective, as I mentioned, we use social media as a tool to engage prospective students, to engage with current students, to engage with alumni. Let's review just for a minute what our social media looks like. I'm going to screen share here. and So here is our primary ATSU Facebook page. We also have an alumni page. We also have a page for ashes. If I come back to the primary page, you'll see we have links to lots of different ATSU pages. These pages, most of these have grown organically, which means they, they, they started up in silos. One department started one here. One school started one there. Some of them are actively used. Some of them don't get so much traffic. Um, what we're trying to do with all of this is tie them together. Like we do on our website, we have the a primary home page, and then we have landing pages for each of the schools. As you drill down further, you get more information. With our Facebook page, we have our primary page, where someone who's just beginning to, be, to, to foster their interest in the university can find out about what goes on in all areas of the university. If they have a particular interest in a school or even a program, they can drill down. See how fast my computer will be. Get into ashes, and then from there they can even go into program pages. So right now we have a program page with Dr. Pell Science for the OTD program, occupational th occupational therapy doctorate. We use Facebook because that's where our audience is. Facebook has by far the most visitors, the most users of any social media. Oh, so that's where we have to be. Rod, do we have any questions about Facebook before I move on? Yeah, that's a good point. So I, I failed to mention at the beginning. Please, uh, for all of the viewers, throw your questions in the uh, Q&A box uh, next to the uh, video stream, um, and we'll try and get your questions in. Uh, I, I guess, Greg, a couple just quick questions about Facebook. I, I think people would be interested to know uh, about how many followers do we have an institution on our various Facebook accounts? Sure. On our primary Facebook page, we have a little over 2,000 followers, people who have liked the page. Um, that's by far the most. Uh, our alumni page has about 1,300. Uh, in raw numbers, that's not great, considering how long we've been around and, and uh, how many alumni we have out there. We have more on our LinkedIn page, and we'll get into that a little bit. Um, but that's part of what we're doing as an institution, is we're trying to, um, again, get more people to like us, produce more information about it. Yeah, I, I know that I kind of follow the uh, alumni um, Facebook account, and it looks like there's a fair amount of traffic there. Do you have any sense of kind of where more traffic tends toward? Does it tend more toward um, alumni or student traffic or faculty and staff type traffic? Do you have any feel for that? 
Well, the alumni page obviously gets most tra traffic from alumni, but people are particularly interested in what's happening within their program. So uh, we have places for uh, alumni of the PT program to engage, for example. And there are a few very active groups within Facebook that support the individual programs. Good. Good. And, and I'm curious, you know, we have program type pages. Any thought to, say, departmental type pages or if people have, um, you know, student services, for example, or um, even ITS. I mean, we have a, a Facebook presence out there. Um, what are communications and marketing's thoughts on uh, departments getting involved in social networking from a Facebook standpoint? That's a good question, and it's easy to think, I have a department or I have a, I have, I have a need for a Facebook page as a programmer, as a department, and there isn't one now. Why don't I just hang one up there? Um, the issue with that, if it's you want to call it an issue, is uh, we're fracturing the limited audience that we have. Right now, we're trying to funnel most people to at the to the school um, Facebook page, or to the next closest level would be a, a uh, to university page or to the school page. If we start getting down to program levels and department levels, we're going to end up having two or three people that are conversing there, and they're, they're sort of end up in a, a silo of their own. That's where we're definitely going in the future. But right now, we just don't have the we don't have the capacity to support it. We don't have the traffic to justify it. Good point. Yeah, it's really about the critical mass. I mean, you need a certain yeah. number of, of people participating to make the conversations interesting. So it looks like we have a few questions there. Gene, can you can you see them? What types of questions are coming in? Helps when I re unmute myself. Uh, most of them are related to Facebook, so I'm going to start throwing them at you if that's all right. Uh, the first one is from Dave Konechny. How can we as staff let others know about the Facebook page? Well, the, the easiest way is to put a Facebook link in your email, in your email footer. So every time you send an email, put a little bug at the bottom of your uh, signature that has the Facebook icon that, and it's connected to the ATSU Facebook page. Okay, great. The next one is Christiani Gunter. Are people who like the main, are people who like the main pages and alumni and student pages truly add those pages to the group? Can we tell if they are accessing those group pages? So it looks like, let me read that again. I, it looks to me like the one thing is that can we tell if people are accessing their group pages? Hmm. Uh, if I understand the question correctly, or at least I'll answer it in one way, and we'll see if, if she responds with a follow-up question. There are analytics in Facebook that tells us how, much, how many times a particular Facebook page is visited. Uh, then the other metric would be how many times people publish uh, an update or post a question there or post a response to someone else. Okay, here's a little uh, clarification from Christiani. Could we centralize traffic in Facebook pages? It appears that we have created too many pages for our university. Can we combine all of the pages? Okay, that is a great question, and that gets back to the, to the fracturing of the audience. That yes, we do have too many Facebook pages. In fact, Lori and I have a spreadsheet that shows dozens of ATSU pages, some of which um, are like unofficial. They don't have our logo on them. They don't have um, official support. And there are there are more than ten that are official, um, meaning they have they've gone through communication and marketing. They have the ATSU logo on them. They are recognized as the official presence, Facebook presence of that school department program. Um, can we combine them? Uh, if there's a good reason to, if if a particular Facebook page or presence has enough uh, traction and has that critical mass, it's going to probably create more problems than it solves by trying to tell all those people who are already engaging in one particular place 
now you have to try to go, we want you to go over to the main ATSU page. They're probably not going to do it. One thing that occurs in, in social media is their people have the ability to express themselves, and we encourage that. So uh, trying, to, trying to herd people over to somewhere where they're not used to participating, particularly if it's at a level higher. So instead of, per, instead of messaging your friends at a program, level, let's go over to the university level, probably not going to happen. Okay, great. Uh, next one is from Randy Danielson. Does anyone monitor postings before they are posted on the university Facebook page? Laura, you want to take that one? Yeah, actually we have a social media team that we have built that includes myself, uh, Karen Scott, Joe Gambosi, Eden Derby, and Michael Estes uh, from Student Affairs. Uh, every two weeks we meet, we uh, come up with ideas for the next month, um, and from that we build out our posts and we use a uh, social media management tool called Hootsuite where we will build those posts into Hootsuite and things that we know that are coming up we will uh, automatically have them post through Hootsuite so somebody's not going in each day posting something new every day it's more efficient um, the core uh, CNM group, we do keep tabs on our social media page. We'll check in daily just to see if any conversations are happening, if there are any questions, if we get any direct messages, and we respond as quickly as we can. So that, it sounds like that's a, a great way to kind of um, get a, a consistent university voice out there. Um, of monitoring the messaging that's going out. I think what Randy was was asking about is, or I'll, I'll interpret for myself, is there any way to monitor what other people are posting and do we have any control over um, you know, people posting without kind of an official voice? I'll take that one. <laughs> uh, that's it, Brian, that's how I interpreted the question as well. And uh, yes, we, we do know what people are posting shortly after they publish it because uh, uh, all the people who are administrators of the various uh, Facebook pages get an email every time uh, a message is posted. We don't preemptively censor uh, and we very rarely do anything with messages. Uh, if something was completely inappropriate, uh, we would delete it. And if they continue that the person who continued to do it, they would be banned from being able to do that. But from a, from a communication and marketing standpoint, uh, we do not preemptively, we don't, we don't moderate uh, messages which would be requiring authorization before it's published. So anybody can publish publish a message on our pages. Um, they will be, we, we notice them, we read them, we respond to them if someone asks a question, but we don't uh, we don't moderate them, we don't require approval of messages before they get published. Yeah, it seems like there's almost some benefit in letting some questions um, sit out there, even if they're not necessarily, you know, particularly positive on, on the institution, because there's, then there's an opportunity for the community to kind of come in and help um, balance or address the question. It seems like that has more of a tone of authenticity to it, where it's not just, you know, strict um, promotion, promotion, promotion. Do you guys see that at all? Uh, the only, I would say the only messages that I think I've ever deleted from any of our social media accounts are spam. Someone who's publishing just a, a buy my stuff or something that that's, doesn't make any sense to be on our Facebook page. We have had sticky questions, if you will, um, and those get routed to the appropriate person for response within the university. We will, uh, if we can't get, a, get an answer right away, we'll publish uh, put a response saying, saying thank you for asking that question, we're working on getting an answer for you. Uh, it's, it's a tool that's very authentic in that it allows real-time communication essentially uh, and a way to reach um, leadership that doesn't really, didn't exist before social media came about. Okay, we have three more questions currently. Let's start with those. Do you focus on the regularly accepted social media or social engagement understanding of engagement? In other words, <laughs> what premises do you follow to assure that engagement is improved? Wow, that is an, um, 
That is a very complex question. Uh, if I understand right, um, are we using tools to monitor metrics for uh, engagement and seeing if it's increasing? At least that's how I'm going to interpret that question. So yes, as Laurie mentioned, we have Hootsuite. We also have our marketing partner, Fabcom, that has a significantly higher capacity in terms of their dashboard and their analytics and their ability to measure uh, all sorts of engagement. Um, we also use social media monitoring tools, uh, which don't just measure Facebook, but measure any reference to AT Still University across all social media platforms. Uh, so, yeah, I would say we do have metrics in place. We do follow best practices uh, from an industry standpoint as well as for the university. You know, I, I think, Greg, that social social networking or social networks are so new that I'm not sure that there really are those good metrics out there for what is engagement. I think that's still kind of kind of developing. You guys have any thoughts on that? I mean, people talk about, you know, the number of posts, but you can have a bunch of junky posts versus one really good post. Laura, you want to take that one? <laughs> sure. Um, you're right. I mean, the Measuring engagement is a challenge uh, because, I mean, seeing the development over the last six months of our particular channels, we did really great during uh, Founders Day and the Mosdo inauguration. We saw a lot of hits on our, our page. We saw a lot of people leaving comments about uh, specific pictures. And then some weeks, things just drop off. Things are kind of hit and miss, and we're still trying to figure out our footing right now and, and where our engagement should fit in for the university. Let's take one more, Jean, and then I think let's keep going, and we can wait for some more questions and to queue up. Okay, sounds good. I will just take the next one in line then. Um, this is from Josiah Harden. What is the ultimate goal of ATSU being on social media? Assuming it's for advertising and attracting donors, how can we tell if it's actually working? Is there any indication that putting resources in social media is profitable? That is a great question. And we do have a vision for where we would where, where we would be at when we're successful. And that that, that true success is when we have reached a level of critical mass where as a communication and marketing department we don't have to continually um, post messages to engage to, to create conversations where we have enough engagement we have enough people participating that it is self-sustaining where where it, it's it's not seen as a advertising marketing tool it's seen as a place where uh, a prospective student can engage with a current student and find out what the program is really like. Or an alumni can engage with an, uh, an, a fellow alumni for, um, for uh, job prospecting or for networking purposes. And it doesn't require uh, university employees to keep posting and fostering conversations. Where, where what we would essentially be doing is just creating a moderation and the structure, we, we create places for these conversations to happen, we'd moderate where, where appropriate, but we wouldn't have to be involved on a, on a daily basis of creating those engagements. That's great, Greg. I, I, I think maybe let's, let's stop with the questions for a couple minutes because I don't want to get too far down that rabbit hole and not have time for you guys to talk about all of the different social properties that, that you're working on. So maybe you can kind of keep going with some of the other social properties and then we'll take, um, take another break for questions. So please, people, keep the questions coming. Sure. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show before I showed a couple of, uh, of our more interesting uses of social media, I wanted to point out iConnect. And I'm going to go back to screen share and so iConnect is a tool that the university has had for a long time. It's called iConnect because it's always been called iConnect. Uh, we are looking as a, actively as a department trying to determine what the right future for iConnect is. What it is right now is a uh, is a place where everything about the university gets published. It gives us an opportunity to um, 
to promote any award that we receive or any um, commendation that, that an alumni has or that the faculty has. There is uh, the full spectrum of information about ATSU goes into iConnect. It has uh, it has a pretty good following, um, but like I mentioned, it's it's not where everybody. It's not Facebook, so it doesn't have this built-in following that Facebook has. So we are looking, and we've been looking for a while, trying to figure out what the best course of action for the iConnect is. It, it, uh, we always want to have a place where we can put everything that's going on about the university. Um, is iConnect that, that best place? Mm, we're still debating that one. So I will leave it at that. Uh, and now I want to talk about two of the ways that ATSU is using social media that um, are unexpected, perhaps, and uh, pretty cool. One of them is our social feed page. And if you haven't heard about this page, don't be surprised. We've, we've let it fly under the radar for the most part um, because we've still been building our social media engagement. And while there's quite a bit of content on this page, not as much as there will be in six months from now or a year from now. What this page does is it aggregates all of our social media content from across all of our channels. So uh, when I say a channel, I mean Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn. And there are icons here. So there's Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Google+. And you can filter this page to show just the content from a particular channel. So if I click on that Facebook icon, all the content here is, is what's what we published, uh, and it's a continually scrolling page. It never reaches the bottom. So it'll go back to the beginning of time from Facebook, showing you all of this great information that's happened there. Uh, same with YouTube, same with LinkedIn, same with Google+. If you're not particularly interested in everything that goes on, say you have a particular interest in KCOM, you can filter by any of the schools, and then again, filter by any of the particular social media channels. So this gives you a way to find out what's been going on in the school level or at the university level and then within particular social media channels all in one handy page. That is located at uh, probably the easiest way is from the top navigation bar. You pull down the menu and you click on social feed. Uh, but the actual URL is atsuedu forward slash contact forward slash atsu dash social dash feed. Just where you would expect it. <laughs> <laughs> Another interesting way that we are using uh, social media is testimonials. And everyone's heard of testimonials. I'm going to keep screen sharing. I'm going to go to our Master of Health Administration degree program page. So just about every school you see, they'll have somewhere on their website, they're going to have a testimonial from either a current student or an alumni saying how great that program was. The way that you typically would do that, you would have, have a person who uh, gives you a testimonial, you put it somewhere just like this person has done. And this is from Sandra, Sandra Suarez. What we're doing that's a little bit different here is that this particular uh, testimonial was published on our LinkedIn product page. So we bring this over from LinkedIn, and let me let me show you how that works. So here is Sandra's testimonial, and we have her name down at the bottom, and we have her title, and we have a little link back to LinkedIn. If someone who's visiting this page, someone who, perhaps a prospective student, sees this testimonial, they, they go, oh, that's interesting. They click this LinkedIn button. And now they are taken to, this is our LinkedIn page. This is the, here's our home page to our company page in LinkedIn. And then within products, I know LinkedIn's a little clunky for how it terms um, pieces of an organization, but until they get their education pages up to speed, we have to use the existing format they have. So we, we call each of our schools a product. And if you drill down into Ashes, I'm in the wrong product, though. School of Health Management. Here is Sandra's testimonial, testimonial that she put in. So we 
dynamically bring that testimonial from LinkedIn, we put it into our Master of Health Administration page. I'm getting lost where I am here. And then it becomes um, dynamic third-party validation. So what that means is someone who's a prospective student, they go to that Master of Health Administration page to find out information. They find a student who graduated from the program. They see what she has to say about it. They go and they go back over to LinkedIn. Now let's say, okay, well, what did she do with this degree? So I'm going to go into Sandra's profile page, and I'm going to take a look at her. You know, I'm a prospective student. I go see what she did. I see that she graduated from ATSU. She attended from 2011. She graduated in 2013. Now let's go back up to her experience. And look, in, in 2013, she got a new job as the clinic manager. That's pretty cool. Did, that, did she get that job because she graduated from ATSU? Maybe, maybe not, but guess what? Now that I'm on her LinkedIn page, I can send her a message and ask her a question. As a prospective student, I have the ability to connect directly with a, someone who's graduated from the program who will, uh, who will presumably give me an unbiased, um, unbiased opinion of the program, and you're off and running. So that is, uh, we do that. Our goal is to do that with all of our program pages. We have a few of them up to speed already, but we're getting further along. So what else are we doing with social media? Lori, I'm going to pass it back to you. Thanks, Greg. Well, we've seen a lot of activity in the last six months on social media. Our little social media team has developed dozens of campaigns on Twitter and Facebook, including Founders Day Trivia, which I mentioned earlier. We also have done live tweets from Mosdo's inauguration. We've tried Flashback Fridays, Where on Campus Wednesdays. During December, we did 25 days of health and wellness, and in February, we ran a week of Go Red for Women and a month-long campaign of Why I Love ATSU. And if you haven't been watching our Facebook page lately, we're currently promoting Athletic Training Month by including student testimonials about the field and the program. As I mentioned earlier, all of this activity would not be possible with me alone. Um, we do have a social media team that meets twice, uh, once every two weeks. Um, again, it consists of Eden Derby, Karen Scott, Joe Gambozzi, myself, Michael Estes. And our sessions that we have, we try to get a, an idea of what's going on around campus, what news is going on, what student events is, are going on. Um, from there, we build out a monthly calendar that maps out our engagement and information posts. And we're hoping to expand our group in the near future. We'd like to include student ambassadors, staff from alumni and development, and more. And the reason why we want to include multiple representatives is we'll be able to better capture all the great things we have going on around the university. This last fall, we partnered with uh, our marketing and web development uh, collaborator, Fabcom, to launch ATSU's LinkedIn initiative. Um, as part of this initial rollout, we worked with administration and faculty in the School of Health Management to create optimized profiles. Those profiles um, are, well, let me back up, uh, the faculty and administrative bios that exist on the university website include a link that link over to LinkedIn's profiles. We have no doubt done a lot in six months, and we certainly plan on doing more. And if you aren't following us on social media, we really encourage you to do so. Um, we appreciate your support. We look forward to you sharing ideas if you happen to have them. Always feel free to call or drop me an email. We're always interested in hearing what's going on around the campus community. So from all this discussion, you're no doubt just itching to get started on social media, or you probably already have a social media page that might need a little dusting off. So where do you start? We'd love it if you came to communications and marketing. We are available to talk with you, to listen to your ideas and goals, and we can provide some strategies to help move you in the right direction. 
we've also created a social media guideline that exists in our branding identity toolkit online. Um, it's a, a great resource to use to learn some best practices about social media. Um, it also includes some university policies including terms of use, HIPAA and FERPA. Um, and you can find that by going to the portal, uh, choose departments in the main menu, then communications and marketing, and finally branding toolkit. I think we're about through with our presentation, so I'm going to hand it back off to Greg. Thanks, Lori. Yep. All right. Uh, before we take any last questions, uh, let me put in one more plug uh, like Lori did. If you don't already have a LinkedIn profile, please go and create one. Why? Well, that's the university is particularly targeting LinkedIn. As, as Lori mentioned, we started the campaign with School of Health Management. As we work through all of the other schools' uh, website pages, we are going to be working with the leadership in those schools and the faculty to develop campaigns through LinkedIn for them as well. So we're, we're, we're specifically targeting LinkedIn because we want people to connect on there. We want to, to leverage it as a way for people to uh, grow their own connections, to work interprofessionally, and also it helps ATSU, the, our primary website for search engine optimization. Something we're doing, the screen share one more time. As Lori mentioned, we have uh, standard content that we're asking everybody to put into their profile. So here's my profile page. We have this block of text which says about AT Still University. If you copy and paste, uh -uh. sounds like maybe we lost Greg a little bit. So, Lori, do you want to jump in and kind of walk walk them through Greg's profile page? Sure thing. Um, what you saw on Greg's profile page is essentially just some basic information about ATSU. We're encouraging employees, staff, faculty to include this statement on their um, summary section of their LinkedIn profile to share with your uh, professional networking friends on uh, what ATSU is about. It's a, a quick snippet of who we are. Yeah, I think LinkedIn is, a, is a, an interesting choice because it really is connections from more of a, a business to business standpoint. I mean, I think that's an interesting way to do it rather than going down the Facebook path or, or Google Plus that are more kind of traditional consumer to consumer um, networking tools. Yeah, I went and update my LinkedIn, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greg, it looks like maybe you're back. Sorry we lost you there for a minute, but Lori covered you. Thanks, Lori. You're welcome. But I got a server error message, so I'm not sure what was up with that. Yeah, interesting. Let's um let's go ahead and go back to questions. I see a few more here. Um, Gene, you want to start going through the questions, and then I've got a couple other follow up things um to go through too. Sure. I'm go just going to start in the order that came. We have from Joan Leafman. Is there a Twitter feed? I believe we answered that though. Laura, you want to tell people where to find it? There, there is. We do have. Uh, it's ATSU underscore news, and we are active on that. We do post news regularly on there. Okay, the next, whoa, it's giving us looks and fits. There we go. Uh, from Aaron Breitenbach, so would you say that at the program level, we should just hold tight and not start our own Twitter, Facebook, etc. pages for our programs? I would say yes. If you don't already have an existing um, an existing page for a program, unless you have a strong community of people who are ready to support it, and by that I mean pu publishing at least once or twice a week, and you have someone that can support it answering questions, uh, then hold off until we have more critical mass at the university level, at the school level, at that time it'll make sense to open up more program level uh, pages. We're probably looking in the 6 to 12 month range before we're ready to do that. Okay, next question is from Joan Leafman. Engagement is not just about metrics. Social networking is about added value and decreasing transactional distance. 
do you pay attention to that? It's about transactional. Uh, I would absolutely agree that that uh, social media is not simply about um, numbers. How many people have published? How many people have? Uh, how many people are following? How many people have get engaged? It is about quality of engagement. I'm not sure this is exactly answering that question, but uh, to be successful on social media, you need people who are uh, publishing authentically, who are answering questions deeply, and who are providing information rapidly. Yeah, I, I, I'll expand on that a little bit. I think w what Joan's trying to get at is kind of the community sense. You know, because ATSU has a, at least the two campuses, you could argue several more if you think about the community health centers where we have students or, um, you know, other places where we have uh, students doing rotations, you know, really to build a community that isn't geographically centric. Um, I think that's a big part of social networking that uh, is kind of uh, coming coming into its own a little bit more. People are getting more comfortable with being able to um, to communicate and, and get to know one another without ever physically meeting each other. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, people are looking for authenticity and our website, while it's going through some ta transition, it is definitely a marketing piece. Um, I just recently read an article online about people who are going to social media first to see what colleges and universities are like before they even get to the university website. They're looking for authenticity. They're looking to see what the community and the campus is really like, how the students are engaged. Yep, how people treat one another, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Yes. There's a culture that, that develops within those communities. And, and I, I was going to ask, too, the use cases that you provided are, are great um, in, in terms of, you know, being able to um, connect people for jobs, um, being able to do uh, kind of testimonial type things. It, it seems to me that um, we start first in more of the traditional communication and marketing types of functions, but isn't there an opportunity at some point in the future to expand social networking right into the academics of the institution? Tell me what that means to you, into the academics. Um, so I'm thinking of things like interprofessional education. So, you know, we start building communities around academic topics as well as, you know, just specific programs or, you know, what's it like to go to ATSU? You know, what's it like from a, a physician speaking to a nurse, speaking to a physical therapist, you know, coordinating with an occupational therapist? Those are, are kind of academic type discussions that could really add some value to the, to the academic experience. Um, and I think they're, they're kind of, uh, built upon having social networking skills. Oh, I, I definitely agree with that. I think there's a right now there's a hesitancy uh, because there's not there there isn't the history that exists for what you can talk about in social media. And certainly there's a there's a there's caution to be had for talking about any kind of patient information, and nobody wants to do that using a using a public forum. So there. As the as the medium evolves and as social media uh, gets integrated into some of the some of the tools that um, healthcare providers are using now, so there could be perhaps a so a secure channel to have that kind of interaction. Uh, that would make sense, but from a broad public perspective, uh, that's a that's a challenge that nobody has figured out yet, and I, and I don't see it going in that direction. Uh, and maybe that's not what you were getting at, but um, from an interprofessional uh, standpoint and being able to connect to um, fellow healthcare providers, that does make sense. That's exactly where I was going, Greg. I, I just wouldn't want a faculty member who's watching this to think, oh, this is just about promoting ATSU and trying to, to recruit. I, I would hope that they would feel like they could come to communications and marketing and say, you know, what would you guys think about me integrating this into my class somewhere? Because I think the skills that you're developing and uh, the, even the processes that you're developing um, could really lend themselves to improved education. Sure, definitely. And, and I think the, the, the kind of message board communication style is already an a, a integral component of any kind of online or distance learning. 
Uh, I think it's the natural evolution for residential um, program when you want to get into discussions and you don't and you're not at that one particular period in your coursework or in your class and you want to keep having more conversations so uh, I know that so like our tool blackboard in, includes a discussion area that is secure and could uh, secure to some degree uh, could lend itself to that kind of uh, community building and and interprofessional communication. Okay, I'm going to go on with questions. Uh, the next is a statement from Joan Leafman. Thank you, Brian. You are expressing the greater value and questions of the importance. So I thought I'd slip that in first. Okay, Christiane Gunter. Can we send a link from this social feed to someone else, let's say a prospective student. She was, I believe that question came in while you were at that all-inclusive page. Can you send a link from it or a feed? Um, Think about, Greg, maybe could you share any of those posts um, with uh, kind of expanding the social network? Sure. You know, so you see something that's interesting on the the consolidated page there. Could I then post back to my own Facebook account saying, "Hey, check this out." And yes, you definitely can. Each of the the what this is is a syndicated feed from each of those social media platforms. So, a particular piece that you read on that social feed page will have a sharing icon from the source uh, the source platform. So it's from Facebook. There's a Facebook icon. Uh, and you can share through that, or there's also Twitter icons on all of them. Looks like so. Uh, yeah, the, there is the ability to uh, share any particular item you see through the native platform as well as through Twitter. Okay, I'm going to move on. The question is giving us some problems, but I think I can work through that. Um, let's see. Let's take this one from Christiani again. It kind of goes hand in hand with the, her other question. Can social feed can the social feed link be connected to our main university page? The answer is yes. Uh, yes, it can. In terms of a, there are links from in the navigation. I think what she's probably getting at is can we put that social feed information perhaps on the home page uh, and not make people have to drill down for it. Uh, I will tell you that in the next couple of revisions to the website where we're going with, we will have social media content integrated within particular program pages and um, probably not the home page, but within pages that people are interested in for each of the programs. I think some of it's already there, isn't it, Greg? So you've got the area that kind of slides across the bottom, and there's yeah. uh, the ATSU social media is one of the widgets that shows up in there. So that's nice right off the home page. Okay, I'll keep going. Here's a couple of kudos for you, Brian, uh, from Christiani. Brian, that is an incredible, important question. In my opinion, the future that we cannot ignore. And then on to Joan Leafman. Thank you, Brian. You are expressing the greater value and questions of importance. And then the final question I have is from Joan. Do you have permission to offer a link to all LinkedIn pages? Offer a link to all LinkedIn pages. Yeah, help us a little bit more on that one, Joan. I'm struggling on that one, too. Permission to uh, offer a link to all LinkedIn pages. Maybe she's wondering if there's like an aggregate for to know where all of the ATSU pages are. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, yeah, we, we could post it. We'll post in our Facebook page a link to each of the, the uh, LinkedIn company page. We have a LinkedIn uh, educational page. And from those two, two landing pages, you can get to any of the group pages, I believe, as well. If not, we'll, po we'll publish links to them in our Facebook page. Excellent. Um, this, this has been a great session in my mind. I, I think you guys are doing a tremendous amount with social media, um, really starting to get our arms around it. 
um, at a variety of levels, student level, alumni level, um, community level. Um, so I think you guys are doing a great job. I'm glad that we're able to share some of this with, with everyone. Um, there are lots of options for people. So as Greg and Lori said, you know, if you, if you haven't started in social media, just do it. Um, create your Facebook account. Um, you know, like the different Facebook programs that are associated with ATSU. Um, take a look at some of those special use cases. Um, Lori, you mentioned that there's this uh, social networking group that gets together. It, and you said that you'd like some input from other people. Is there any way should they contact you if they're interested in joining that, or how, how would that work? Sure, they can drop me an email, and if they have uh, suggestions or some ideas that they would like to see possibly implemented, I will be willing to talk to them. Great. Okay, we've got some clarification on Joan's question. Uh, what she was asking was, can you to publish everyone's information publicly? Have you gotten permission from all faculty and students? Um, the answer to that, have we gotten permission? I would say it's probably no, because their information is already on LinkedIn. So the, if the question is, uh, do we have express permission to? I think they're, 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 we have permission to have their um, their biography on the particular pages. If someone wants to opt out of not having a link to their LinkedIn page, which is already public, we've had several discussions. Brian and I, and we've uh, both Lori and I, and Brian, it, it, we've gone around this question a couple of times. Um, what level of privacy is appropriate if you have a public LinkedIn profile. So I'm willing to take off a link if you don't want your pro your LinkedIn page connected to your ATSU biography. I will say I don't really understand why you wouldn't want it because it's already public information, but I'm willing to remove it if you do not want it. Yeah, I think that's one of the confusing things for people is, uh, you know, what we're really doing is coordinating existing public presence on the internet um, and, and showing the association with ATSU. Um, so it's not like there's really anything new that's being done there. It's just coordination of um, existing content. Um, and the, the whole profiles question I, I think is a difficult one because um, you, you might have a LinkedIn profile, you might have a Facebook profile, you might have a Google Plus profile, you might have a web page profile. All of these um, really exist on their own and what makes sense is for us as an institution to kind of take advantage of that um, for people so that students, prospective students, prospective donors, prospective researchers um, know where to find more information about ATSU people. Um, so connecting those profiles to me is, is an advantage for everybody. Any last thoughts? Lori, Greg, Jean, anyone? My Thank you guys so much. As, as Brian said, if you're interested in doing social media, just jump into it and start it. Create your profile. Start publishing. Uh, start putting up your thoughts. The easiest way to do it is just to get into it and do it. Amen. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Lori. And thanks, Gene, too. Um, for everyone else who's still there, our next Lunch and Learn will feature uh, Dr. Randy Danielson the Ashes Dean, who's entitled uh, a discussion, I'd like to write a medical article, but... Um, so it'll be a, a great uh, session, um, thinking a little bit more from an academic standpoint on uh, writing uh, peer-reviewed type m materials. Um, that's going to be on Tuesday, March 25th uh, at 1 o'clock Central Time. Uh, is that still right, Gene, or would that be 2 o'clock Central if it's over the lunch hour in Arizona now? It would be 2 Central. 2 o'clock Central, so I stand corrected on that. Um, and remember uh, with that comment that uh, there's now two hours difference between uh, Missouri and Arizona. So a little bit more difficult for us to coordinate, but uh, really appreciate everyone tuning in. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Brian. Thank you.